Hello, everyone, and we got to talk about what effect the having will have. I talked about this in my stream, but for those of you that don't watch my stream, by the ways you should, um, we got to talk about like you know, is this going to be different than the other havings? Because we have the ETF, and that's kind of like thrown everything astray. Um, you realize that like we've reached an all-time high before. Uh, the having, which has never happened before. So things are moving a little differently. Because there's such a big influx of demand, will the supply contraction at the having really affect it? Because if you think right now, like the buy and sell pressure, like the demand does completely outweigh the supply. So we're going to go up either way, but will it affect the speed of us going up? And I do believe the answer is yes, but, and for a couple of different reasons we're going to discuss. First of all, the contraction in supply is still a contraction. I believe it's like 900 down to 450. So, you know, like instead of getting 28K or so about a month of Bitcoin, you're gonna cut it down to 14K. Even if that demand right now is four or five times what the supply is, that still means the available amount of Bitcoin has shrunk in half. That means that these big institutions are going to be digging deeper and deeper into Coinbase, Kraken, and other exchanges reserves. And they're going to be trying to get at like the deep reserves that people are not selling because they want to expand their product. They want to collect their fees. They want to dominate the market. So they're not going to be slow in doing this. And they're probably going to be willing to fork out a big price for it. Now, to fork out some of that hidden Bitcoin, they're going to have to raise the price. Of course, before they offer high prices to those guys that are really willing to sell, um, they are going to buy up all the available Bitcoin on the exchanges as well, as long as it's cheaper than what the people that won't sell are demanding. Now, the miner reserves are about at 1.8 million Bitcoin. So that's going to take a while. But like, you know, the miners don't really want to sell anything. And as they approach the more unbuyable Bitcoin, that price is going to go higher and higher and higher. And they're going to buy They're going to buy up the exchange reserves, too. So just by that, uh, because like as they approach people that are less willing to sell, they're going to be buying the exchanges until they get to that price um, where the exchange price is higher and they're willing to sell. So I don't really know what that price is. It could be 90000 or 100000 or higher. But what I do know is it's much higher than it is right now. And the less Bitcoin that are available, the less like continuous supply that's going to come out of the market. And because the continuous supply that's coming out of the market uh, is constantly getting less and less, um, I do believe that the price will push up faster after the halving. So the supply crunch, even though it's not the only trigger anymore, and the demand crunch is a much bigger trigger right now, it doesn't mean the supply crunch doesn't have any effect. And it'll actually reduce the number of days where supply outstrips demand, and we have those dips. So not only does it kind of like amplify the effect of the ETFs, it also kind of reduces the amount of days we're going to have those dips. Obviously, there's still going to be days we have dips like today. There was a bunch of liquidations today. There was some profit taking today. And, uh, you know, the whales are still going to use the futures in the secondary market to manipulate the market like they do in every market. That's not really that surprising at all. But, um, they're going to have a less of an opportunity to do that if there's not as much supply flowing in because there's a lot of people that are hungry with demand uh, that are actually going to be buying Bitcoins. And I think it may actually make the bull market stretch over a longer period of time because there's just less coins available. So people have to line up and wait for their turn to buy the Bitcoin. And I think there's another factor of the halving that people haven't really thought of. And that's the psychological effect of the halving. And that one is actually really important. I do actually believe that why a lot of these retail altcoin buyers haven't come in yet is because the halving hasn't come in yet. Yes, there's the meme coin buyers, but they'll always be there. They'll be out there throughout the entire uh, bull run. I'm not afraid that the meme coin craze is gonna die off now just because Solana basically had a bit of a shutdown. That's not gonna happen. There's always gonna be a large group of crypto people that are very, very much interested in fast profits. And they're always going to be buying these, um, you know, garbage meme coins. It's just how it is. It's, you're not going to be able to change that, unfortunately. Fortunately or unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that really shouldn't matter all that much because um, the rest of the people that actually want to invest in long-term projects, uh, they're probably looking 
saying that like, I think it's kind of stupid, but they're kind of saying like, you know, like these coins really go parabolic after the halving. So let's get in a month or two after the halving before they really get parabolic. I think these guys, some people have set schedules of when they want to come in right after the halving and they're not going to be budged by price really going up. So they're probably not going to come in after the halving. So if you're looking for an altcoin bull run, I think the altcoin bull run will probably um, still stick to the schedule it's always been that because of the psychological effect of the having and the timelines because a lot of people really believe strongly in the four year cycle and you know crypto and ta and all that stuff it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy and this isn't really ta this is just like a four year cycle it's just like that's a self-fulfilling prophecy and uh, if enough people believe in it that's generally what will happen so that's essentially what's going to happen right now because it is a self-fulfilling prophecy and I think the amount of people coming into altcoins specifically will be much greater after the halving than they are right now. So I'm not really too worried about the altcoins. I think they'll have their time. Same thing with DeFi and a lot of the other stuff. And I think this will just amplify the meme coin run, which is why I'm holding on to a lot of the meme coins right now. So like the Bitcoin have the Bitcoin bull run, although it started. Already, I think we're already almost in the parabolic phase. The altcoin boron is going to come a little bit later because the ETF money doesn't actually flow into the altcoins. But I do not believe the uh, we were anywhere near the top. I don't believe that uh, boron will be shortened. So it's not like it's just going to not run, only run until like the summer and then not run anymore. I do believe there's a chance that it will be lengthened because people will take years to actually buy the ETF and the demand is going to be there. They're saying like a trillion dollars now in the ETF, which is completely believable, maybe even more with sovereign funds. And that's gonna take a year or two at least to actually come in. So I wouldn't be afraid of the Bitcoin bull run ending early. If anything, it could stretch out and it could actually mitigate the effects of the bear market. Now that's only for Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum if it gets an ETF. That's not for the altcoins. When Bitcoin gets kind of dull, those altcoins are going to fall because they don't have an ETF and there's not a lot of people pouring money into like stuff that's actually going to hold them up. So if you're in the altcoin market, you I still think you want to be out by at least the end of next year. But with Bitcoin, you might be able to hold on a little bit longer while maintaining your gains. So I think that's kind of the um, effect of the halving. I think it'll affect the altcoins more than it'll affect Bitcoin, but it should amplify the effects of Bitcoin. And I wouldn't really have any hesitation of actually buying or DCAing into Bitcoin right now. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.